contrite heart Humbly I surrender all that I am I want to learn from you Please draw me close to you Help me share your love and grace in all I do Lord, I come before you with contrite heart Humbly I surrender all that I am I want to learn from you Please draw me close to you Let me share your love and grace in all I do Oh Lord, transform me Change my heart This morning, the message is entitled, What is it in thy hands? Let's pray, our Father and our God. We give you praise and thanks for waking us up this morning. You have been such a great and wonderful God. As we get into your word this morning, speak to our hearts and come alive in Jesus' name. The wisest man that ever lived. King Solomon in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10 says, Whatsoever thy hands find it to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. There is no success in the grave. Whatever you have to do on earth, to succeed, you have to do it while you're alive. Whatever you put your hands to, you have to give it your best. You see, knowledge is information. Anybody can gather information. You can go on the website and such, and you can get lots of, lots of information. But wisdom is how to apply the knowledge or information to succeed in life. Searching for the material and knowledge and wisdom can be a little difficult. Every opportunity that presents itself, take it to the fullest. You know, an old wise man way up in the Himalaya mountains would come down on occasions and try to entertain the young boys in the village. He would tell them what is it they have in their pockets. And what is it they have in their bags? And so one day the young boys decided that they would discredit this old wise man. And so they met together and they said, all right, you know what we're going to do? We're going to get a bird and, and we're going to coop it in our hand. And we would ask him, what is it we have in our hands? And if he said it's a bird, we're going to ask him, is it alive or dead? And if the old man said it is alive, then we're going to squeeze it and end his life. 
And if the old man said that the bird is dead, we're going to open our hands and allow the bird to fly. So as to discredit him. The old man eventually came down. And the young man got a bird. And, and they went to the old man and they said, old man, old man, tell us what is it we got in our hands. And the old man said, a bird. And they asked him the question, is it dead or alive? And the old wise man said, the bird is in your hands. You decide by your choice whether the bird is alive or dead. And let me say to all of our young people watching today, life is in your hands. You do it with life as you please. You can squeeze your life out by drugs and alcohol and addiction. But you can give yourself an opportunity by opening up your hands and opening up life. Whereby you can enjoy it to its fullest. Whenever work is said to do, do not idle, sit and view it, nor be content to wish it done. Begin at once and do it. Speak the truth and speak it ever, cost it what it will. He who hides the wrong he does, does the wrong thing still. Standing at the foot boy, gazing at the sky. How can you get up, boys, if you never try? Though you stumble off, boys, never be them cast. Try and try again, boys, you would succeed at last. The great Lord specializes in making insignificant things great and mighty. With our scarce resources, little knowledge, limited ability, broken language, if only we are willing to make the sacrifice and commitment to serve God, we may not always get the verb right, but certainly we can get the heart right for God's kingdom. Glenn Cunningham was told by his doctor he would never be able to run again. When he stretched his legs, his muscles and flesh would cheer, but he went on to be the world's fastest runner in his day. Stop believing the devil's lies. And have faith in God and his words. It was Upper Winfrey who said, and I quote, My philosophy is that not only are you responsible for your life, but doing the best at this moment puts you in the best place for the next moment. It was Jesse Jackson who said, and I quote him, Believe in yourself. If your mind can conceive it, then your heart can believe it. And with God's help, you can achieve it. Don't wait for extraordinary opportunities. Seize common occasions and make them great. In this advancing age of science and technology, automation and mechanization and computerization you, you touch a screen and things happen. You touch a button and things happen. We as Christians need something in our hands that is fast and powerful and that can match with the time in which we live. And the Bible. I want to introduce the Bible to you. What is it in our hands? The Bible. What is so significant about the Bible? One man said, the Bible is the basic instructions before leaving planet earth. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, the Bible tells us, For the word of God is quick. In this day and age, we need something that is quick. You know, but there are lots of things that are quick and they're not powerful. For the Bible says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a de discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. 
The word of God is sweet. It can stand up to the technological world. The word of God is powerful. In Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, the apostle Paul says, he says, for the word of God is powerful. And he said, for I'm not ashamed of the word of God, for it is the power of God unto salvation. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It can cut back and forth. The word of God performs operations in our joints and our, and our marrow and our brain and our heart. I see here in that text the bone specialist. I see the, the cancer specialist. I see the neurosurgeon. I see the cardiologist. And I see Jesus, the one who can get to our heart. Let me ask Moses that question. What is it in the hands, Moses? And Moses said, a rod. What is so important about a rod? To me, a rod could be insignificant. But the Bible tells us in the book of Exodus chapter 14, from verse 13, the Bible says, I want to read it. Exodus chapter 14, from verse 13, the Bible says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he would show to you today. For the Egyptian whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more. And verse 14 says, The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. What is significant about the rod? The rod at the burning bush was a miracle working rod. It turned into a serpent when it was thrown to the ground. And uh, when Moses picked it up by the tail, it turned into a rod again. The rod in the presence of Pharaoh. His magicians took control and swallowed up the other serpents. The rod at the dry rock. When Moses hit that rock, water came out from that dry rock so that the people, the children of God, can live. It was at the brinks of the Red Sea. And the Bible says Moses stood there, the Egyptian army. They were coming after him and not knowing what to do. Moses, like uh, every Christian, maybe started to pray. And God said, Moses, what is it in thy hands? It's time to stop praying. Step forward and stretch the rod out. And Moses stepped forward, stretched that rod, and instantaneously, the Bible says, the water just piled up on both sides, and both sides, they were like a wall. Then I asked, I need to ask somebody else that question. And I asked David, what is it in their hands? And David said, a sling. What is so important about a sling? Moses, uh, David Look at a nine feet, nine inches tall man and walked into him and said to him, you come to me with a sword and a shield, but I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. Not only he knocked him out and knocked him down, but that was the end of him. Let me say to you, no matter what it is, it might be small and insignificant, but with the power of God, you can accomplish great things for God. Then I need to ask somebody else that question. And let me ask Gideon. Gideon was God's leader. And uh, the Amalekites and the Midianites, they teamed up together to fight God's people, and they were like grasshoppers. As a matter of fact, one commentator said they were about 120,000 strong. Gideon only had 32,000 men. And Gideon thought that his army was too small for 125,000. So he took a ram's horn and, and he went out in the village and he blew his horn. Sounding an alarm appealing to more men to join the army. But God said to him, Gideon... These men are too many. All those who have family responsibility and thinking about home, send them back. Out of 32,000, 
22,000 went back home. And God said to Gideon, he said, Gideon, these men are too many. Take them down by the water brooks. And he that stooped down and have a good drink, all he's concerned about is his stomach. Send them back home. Out of 32,000 men, only 300 men lap it the water with their hands. And God said, that's my men. Let me say to you, not all who are in Israel are Israelites. The whole church is not God's army. Gideon, 32,000 men were not God's army. God's army comprises of the brave and the faithful, not the cowards. And uh, Gideon and his men, they decided that we're going to use the trumpet. That day, the musicians won a battle. And uh, the picture, you know, they have the lights in that shell that is made and it can be broken. And they, each man was responsible for a hundred soldiers and they encamped at night, they encamped the army. And they, all of them had the trumpet and at a particular time they need to break the picture so that the light can be seen and then they need to blow the trumpet so they would wake up uh, the enemies and when they woke up they saw the lights from every side and the men encroaching upon them and they heard the noise from the trumpet and they destroyed their own selves that day the musicians the trumpets, they won. Let me ask Jehoshaphat, what is in thy hands? And he said to me, singers, a choir. What is so significant about a choir? Jehoshaphat had a similar problem. Two armies team up together to fight him, the Moab, Moabs and the Amorites. But he realized that the battle is not his. So he called the entire nation to a prayer and fast. And they prayed. And then he said in Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 15 that the battle is not ours, but the battle is the Lord's. He put a choir together and he rehearsed the choir. In the rehearsal, all they had to do was to say, Praise the Lord for his mercies endure it forever. Could you imagine being a member of that choir standing in front of the army and uh, when the opposing army coming upon you with the bows and the arrows, what you have to say is praise the Lord for his mercies endure it forever. God intervened and they ambushed each other and they destroyed themselves. Before we close, I need to ask somebody else that question. And I need to ask it to my Lord and Savior, what is it in thy hands? And as he opened his hands, I can see those nail prints. And it reminds me of Calvary, when my Savior was stretched, and the nails went through his hands, and a crown of thorns pressed into his brow. And the blood came down his face and a spear was placed in his side and blood and water came out and he shouted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He was saving man while he was dying. A thief on the cross. He said, you save others. He was concerned about his physical life. Why don't you come down and save us? Another thief said, Master, when thy kingdom come, remember me. He was not thinking about his physical life because he deserved to die. He was thinking about his spiritual life. The earth made new. As I end the message, there are some battles that we need to fight. Number one, self. The loss of all kinds. The loss of the eyes. And the loss of the flesh, fornication and adultery and pornography. Number two, we need to fight the world, the pleasures, the dress, the music, the nails and the, the tattoos and, and all these things. Number three, 
the devil and his temptation. The prayer pressure and disobedience. The sin that can knock us down all the time. Jesus used the word of God effectively. So can you. Let the devil know it. It is written, it is in God's word. Familiarize yourself with what God says in his word. Study it so that you can use it skillfully. Use it in a time and circumstances when the demand is great. To defend self and the cause. To vindicate God's name. Moses knew his rod. He had used it many times before. David knew his sling. He had used it many times before as a shepherd boy. Gideon and Jehoshaphat as leaders, they knew their God. God came true for them many times before. You and I need to be skilled as they were. The Holy Spirit can guide us into victory. As I conclude, what is in their hands, Moses? A rod. What is it in their hands, David? A sling. What is it in their hands, Gideon? A trumpet. No light. What is it in their hands, Jehoshaphat? A choir and some singers. What is it in their hands, Jesus? Nail prints. What is it in your hands today? The unadulterated word of God. If you read it and you apply it, then you can receive eternal life. As I give you the application, what is so significant about the Bible? A trumpet, a light, a sling, singers, and nails. If placed in the hands of God-fearing men and women, it can open the Red Sea. Slay great giant, destroy armies, and set sinners free. If you want to be a living instrument to glorify God in your heart, I want you to accept Jesus in your heart. If you want God to use you, whatever you, you have in your hands, you want to place it in God's hands. Your talents, your gifts, your monies, your time, your body, your education, whatever it is, you want to give it to the honor and glory of God. Bow your heads. Our Father and our God. Whatever it is in our hands. Even though it's insignificant. Once we give it to you. You can transform this world. Help us dear God. Whatever you place in our hands. Whatever gift that you have given to us. Help us to use it. To the names, honor, and glory of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Help me shine a light to a darkened world. And always live the truth in every way. May your love for me be seen by everyone. And lead others to trust.